Hey everybody, this is Rob with Grain Outdoor Cooking. We're going to do a little Dutch oven cooking for you, a 14 inch Dutch oven. We're going to break it up a little bit tonight. We're going to use propane instead of charcoal or uh, briquettes. Show you how versatile these things really are. This won't need, this dish won't need no top heat at all. It'll just fry and then simmer it up. So we're going to do some uh, London broil, real cheap London broil we got. Only like $3.99 a pound. I'm just going to show you how easy it is to make it tender and eatable. I took and sliced it and I took a knife and just chopped it up. Then we're going to put it in some coconut oil and fry it up. And once it's all fried up, then we'll put a bunch of vegetables in there some pepper, celery, garlic, onions, some uh, beef broth, and then crushed Italian flavored tomatoes we'll put in it. And it's my version of the pepper steak that I like. And then we're gonna put it on top of rice. We'll do some rice, we'll do that in the house, so we're not gonna do it in Dutch oven tonight, but it's getting dark. Again, we're getting a late start. Well, we're gonna start frying up some stuff here. Put a little bit more coconut oil. I've never used coconut oil for this before. I've always used uh, vegetable oil or uh, olive oil. My wife turned me on to coconut oil three, four years ago when we got together and kind of like it. What you want to do with this dish is you want to brown up this steak. It was a London broil I took and tenderized and floured. We'll flop it in here and if you gotta do more than one layer, it's okay because we'll just Flip it and turn it until it's all browned. And then we're going to add the juice and the vegetables and we're going to simmer it up for about an hour, hour and a half until everything's done. The celery, the garlic, peppers, steak is usually uh, just fall apart. We're using a 14 inch Dutch oven, so we got plenty of room, we won't fill it all up. Just let her uh, fry up. Alright folks, I'm going to throw a little bit of seasoning on it. It's been cooking a little while. Sprinkle a little bit on here. This is going to have a lot of juice in it, so I don't think you can over season it. I suppose you can, but it would take a lot to over season it. Because what I do with my seasoning, I just go to the store and I just go down the aisle on all the seasonings and I pick out what I think will go good together and then bring it all home, mix it all together, and then I fill up the jugs that they came in. And I literally change it every time. It's never the same. But it seems to work really good for beef, pork, chicken, fish, potatoes, whatever I cook, I put it on turkey, deep fried turkeys, whatever I do, I put it on it and it works out really good. So anyway, we'll let this finish up frying and we'll see you in a minute. Alright, we're going to give her a flip here, folks. It's looking pretty good. One thing about a Dutch oven, once you get it and you get it seasoned up, they're non-stick. You get a nice layer of black and see how that comes right off. There's nothing stuck down there. It builds up a layer of carbon on it. And it's literally the best non-stick surface you'll ever find in my opinion not bad for you. Probably even actually good for you if you ask me. So anyway, when you clean your Dutch ovens, I'm sure a lot of you know, some of you might not, but you're starting, you don't use soap and water on them, or soap on them, use water of course. If you don't use soap, just boil it, use a scrubby, scrub all the food out of it, 
so there's nothing hanging around. You rinse it out, and once you got it all out and it's looking good, you put it on the stove or back here. And some people throw it right in the campfire, face down, and let it burn out the food. And then they take dirt, sand, scrub the rest of it out, scrub it smooth, and then heat it back up and oil it. And then once that's cooled down, that, that, that cast iron sucks that oil into the pores of the cast iron and then eventually puts that layer of carbon in there that is non-stick. Excellent for cooking eggs or frying steak or chicken or whatever you need to do. So you gotta watch how you want. Maybe one of these times I'll do a video on maintenance and care on a Dutch oven and maybe do one for beginners of what you should have around. Lid lifter, gloves, tongs for your charcoal if you're going to use it, shovel for your coal or ashes out of the fire, stuff like that. So maybe I'll do that one of these days and post that and see if you guys like it. So we'll let this finish frying up and then come back to you before we start adding the vegetables and juice to it and let it simmer up. Alright, see you in a minute. This is all that flavor up off the bottom there. Let's turn my heat down a little bit to simmer this. Okay, we put our tomatoes. These are just uh, diced up tomatoes with Italian seasoning already added in. We got the vegetables, celery, bell peppers. garlic. So it was three bell peppers. Uh, about six cloves of garlic. We got about one and a half onions. We'll put that much in there. And we're gonna add some Worcestershire. I like Worcestershire sauce. Probably saying it wrong, but and then we're gonna put some beef broth in it. And then we're gonna let this whole whole con concoction simmer up. We'll give it a little bit of a mix up here. Get everything all mixed up together nice. What we'll do with this is it'll kind of thicken up a little bit with that flour from the beef. And as this boils and simmers It'll thicken up a tad, and then it gives you a nice, I don't know what you'd call it, nice, nice little meal on top of rice. We'll cover this up with the lid. We want to keep the juices in there as much as we can. Once that starts simmering and boiling good, then I'll go ahead and turn my heat down a little bit so it isn't too hot and simmer it for about an hour, hour and 15 minutes see how it goes it's pretty warm out tonight so we'll let it simmer for a little while and check back with you here shortly see you in a minute all right decided to do some uh, rice in the Dutch oven it just adds Dutch oven cooking adds such a unique flavor to your food and even to your rice that uh, we decided to go ahead and do it so, obviously it's rice, so there's nothing special about it. You boil your water, put your rice in, you let it set. This is our pepper steak, and I wish the video had smell because I'm telling you, this stuff smells amazing. She even my wife can comment on it, she's smelling it. She's just smiling, she ain't gonna say nothing, I guess. 
I think I embarrassed her. But I'll tell you, man, that smells good. Super, super good. See how it's getting nice thick? It's not thick, but it's thicker than what water would be. If you want it thicker, you can mix up some flour and water, starch and water, whatever you like to use to thicken stuff up. But for me, I'll just leave the lid cracked a little bit. That'll let a little moisture out and let it boil some more. Once this rice is done, this dish will be done. We can take and uh, we'll dish some up, show you what it looks like. Put some rice on the plate and a little bit of pepper steak on the dish and show you how it all comes together. All right, all right, thanks. All right, folks. Let's see what we got going here. Shut the heat off about 10 minutes ago just to let it set up a little bit. Oh yeah. Rice is done. Get us a little bit of rice. The bowl's gonna get hot, so we'll right, let's get good rice. It's kind of the way she goes, just like that, folks. You want a little more juice or whatever you like. You do it a little different though. I'm gonna have the wife come over here and I'm gonna give her a bite. She won't let me put her on camera, but that way you'll get somebody else's opinion other than mine every time. I can tell her mouth's watering too. She's licking her lips. Okay, here we go. Did you have to say something, honey? It's delicious. Okay, hey, folks. <laughs> it is hot. But it's very good. So there you go, folks. Hopefully you guys learned something. If I didn't show you nothing new, then hopefully you try this recipe. And If you try it, let me know. Comment. Let me know what you think of it. If you got any suggestions or whatever you got. And from my family to yours, God bless.